good evening students good evening sir this is all the strength strength today the six members so what were we discussing the previous class Just a minute, please. My device is very, very slow. Yeah. So last class, uh, I think we discussed about the refraction through. We, we found the lateral displacement and apparent shift concept. I think these were the two concepts that we discussed last class. This class, what we will do is we will discuss about the refraction at spherical surface. so when you have a spherical surface or for that matter when you have a spherical boundary and if i take a point particle placed here okay let's say this is the rarer medium this is the denser medium so rarer medium the refractive index is mu1 the denser medium the refractive index is mu2 right when the ray is traveling like this and hitting this surface at this point what are we supposed to do at the point of incidence what are we supposed to do Draw the normal, right? And this is the actual path of the particle. So when a ray is traveling from rarer to denser medium, what will happen to that particle? Uh, sorry, what will happen to that ray? I asked a very simple question. When the ray is traveling from rarer to denser medium, what happens to that particle? Sorry, the ray. The ray What's starts bending. That? Yes, correct. So it starts bending towards the normal. Okay, and if I take a ray along the principal axis, then the angle of incidence is zero. Hence, the angle of refraction will also be zero. Let me call this point as the point where the image is formed. Okay. Now, if I take this angle as alpha, this angle as beta, and this angle as theta, and let me say this is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of refraction. Okay. So let this point be A. This is P. This is B. C is already taken. Now, if I take that and remember one more important point: these are all. Paraxial rays. What do you mean by paraxial? Those rays which are closer to the principal axis. Okay. So these are all the paraxial rays for which what is going to happen is. Uh, listen to this carefully. If I consider the triangle AOC, where I extend this like this. Then this angle will be I. This will be alpha, and this will be theta. Correct? So, what is the relation between all these three angles? I is equal to alpha plus theta. Why? Yeah. 
exterior angle is equal to complete the statement sum of opposite interior angles right i is equal to alpha plus theta similarly if i take the triangle a c i then this angle is theta this is r and this is beta right the what is the relation between all these things theta will be equal to r plus beta correct which implies r is equal to how much b uh, theta minus beta so r is equal to theta minus beta the same logic okay then if you apply snell's law at point a by applying snell's law at point a we get mu1 into sin i is equal to mu2 into sin r but since rays are paraxial this similar place recording in progress so since rays are paraxial can i say u1 into i is equal to mu2 into r right because the angles are small so mu1 into what is the value of i i can be written as alpha plus theta is equal to mu2 into r can be written as theta minus beta okay so let this be equation number 1 similarly since rays are paraxial i repeat it again since rays are paraxial ab can be treated to be vertical that is i can take ab to be vertical when that is the case i can say this is 90 degrees when this is 90 degrees i'll get three right angle triangles see a b o i'll call this as alpha similarly i will take a b c where else this angle is theta similarly i will take the triangle a b i so that the distance between p and o is u the distance between b and c is r the distance between b and i is v okay but remember one thing u is on the left hand side r and v are on the right hand side okay so have this point in your mind then what i can say is tan alpha i can write it as ab divided by bo ab divided by bo and this is approximated to alpha because the angles are small similarly tan theta is equal to ab divided by bc so i can write it as ab divided by r and similarly i can write beta that is tan beta is equal to ab divided by bi or ab divided by b right which can be approximated to beta this can be approximated to theta right so substituting all these values in one what do we get mu1 into alpha plus theta is there no so mu1 into alpha is how much 
AB divided by BO plus theta. Theta is how much term? AB divided by R is equal to mu2 into theta minus beta. Theta is AB by R minus beta is AB divided by, I'll not call it as B, I'll write it as B itself. Uh, AB divided by B. Okay. So, AB will get cancelled everywhere. Mu1 into 1 divided by, what is the value of BO? BO will be minus U plus 1 divided by, this is plus R is equal to mu2 into BC is how much? BC is also plus R minus 1 divided by BI is U. Now, minus mu1 by U plus mu1 by R is equal to mu2 by R minus mu2 by V. So, this will come this side, this will go to the other side. Mu2 by V minus mu1 by U is equal to mu2 minus mu1, the whole divided by R. So, this is the formula for refraction at spherical surface. Those who want to copy this can copy. So let me know once you're done. Are done? Yes, sir. Next. The next concept is refraction by lens. So refraction by lens. Okay. So when you take a lens into consideration, how is the image formed by it is what we are going to see. Okay, listen to this carefully. So if I take a lens, you know what is the lens, right? So lens is basically 
a refractive medium okay so lens is basically a refractive medium where at least one of the surfaces is spherical in nature okay where at least one of the surfaces is spherical in nature so if you take a convex lens something like this a biconvex lens right then if you take a ray going like this then what will happen is we can say that the final image due to is is formed on the other side of the uh, lens on the principal axis itself because you are considering a point object now what will happen if you break this lens into two parts okay if you break the lens into two parts we can say that the first surface n1 is there right the first surface n1 will produce an image which will act as an object for the second surface n2 okay so how are we going to derive the relation is what we are going to see so listen to this carefully what is happening yeah okay i'll explain it here it's easy if i take this as the air medium and this as the glass medium then what will happen is as i told you due to the first refracting surface n1 what will happen there will be an image formed and that image will be formed within the lens itself okay so the image will be formed within the lens itself so if i take this medium's refractive index to be mu1 this medium's refractive index to be mu2 then this distance will be u and this distance will be v1 so that when you apply the refraction at spherical surface formula you get mu2 divided by v1 minus mu1 divided by u is equal to mu2 minus mu1 divided by r1 and i'll call this as equation number 1 okay similarly this distance will be v1 and this distance will be v okay so here it will be mu1 and this will be mu2 here i will apply the formula mu1 by v minus mu2 by v1 is equal to mu1 minus mu2 divided by r2 this will be two, equation number 2 now add these two you will get mu1 by v minus mu1 by u is equal to mu2 minus mu1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 right then we will have mu1 into 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to mu2 minus mu1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 so take mu1 to the other side then you will get 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to mu2 by mu1 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 and 1 by v minus 1 by u is 1 by f okay 1 by f will be equal to mu2 divided by mu1 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 okay and this formula is called as lens 
makers for So copy this. Are you guys able to understand or not? Right. Are you done writing it? Yes, sir. The next thing that we are going to see today is, this is going to be the last one for the day, that is lens formula. Okay. So when you take lens like this so if an object is placed over here let's say the object is placed let's say the object is placed between the center of curvature and the focus then when you take a ray parallel to the principal axis after reflection will pass through the focus on the other side. And when you take a ray through the optical center, it will go and meet here. So that the final ray is formed beyond C. Okay. So this is what is going to happen. And this is going to be the optical center. So if I take this as AB, and this as A dash, B dash. Then from here, if I drop a perpendicular, then this point will be M. So just give me a minute. I'm getting a call. Just give me a minute. So listen to this. 
So if I take the right angle triangle BAO and I take the triangle B dash A dash O, one thing I can conclude is if this angle is theta, this angle is also theta, right? Because they're vertically opposite angles. That is, this is theta, this is also going to be theta. This is 90, this is also 90. So they both are going to be uh, similar according to the AA criteria, right? And we know that this distance is U, this distance is V, and this distance is the focal length. Okay. Now, can I say ABO or BAO for that matter? Can I say that the triangle BAO is similar to triangle B dash A dash O? Then I'll get AB divided by A dash B dash is equal to AO divided by A dash O, which implies what is the value of AB? Okay, which this is the thing. And let me call this as equation number one. Similarly, if I take the triangle MOF and B dash A dash F, If I take the triangle MOF and B dash A dash F, then this angle and this angle are same, angle O and angle A dash are the same. So I can say triangle MOF is similar to triangle uh, B dash A dash F. When this is going to be the case, then MO divided by B dash A dash will be equal to OF divided by O dash F. But remember, MO and AB are similar in terms of length. So BA divided by B dash A dash is equal to OF divided by O dash F. So let me call this as equation number. So AB divided by A dash B dash is equal to AO divided by A dash O is equal to OF divided by O dash F. So these two can be of same value, right? AO divided by A dash O will be equal to OF divided by A dash F, sorry. So what is AO minus U divided by A dash O is V is equal to OF is F divided by what is A dash F? A dash F is V minus F. So cross multiply minus UV plus UF is equal to VF. Okay. So divide with UVF on both the sides. cancel minus uv divided by uvf plus uf divided by uvf is equal to 1 by u. So bring it this side, take this one to the other side, you will get 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f. So this is what we call it as lens formula. So what is the difference between previous formula and this one? What was the previous formula called as? Lens maker, sir. Correct. That is called as lens maker's formula, whereas this is called as the lens formula. Okay, the previous one is called as lens maker's formula because uh, the people who are making lens will use that formula to calculate the power. And then based on that, they will choose all the refractive indices and all those things and then make the materials.
okay so this is what we call it as lens formula i hope it is clear right today we discussed three important concepts what are they one is called as refraction at the spherical surface second is called as refraction by lens and the third is lens makers formula sorry uh, second we discussed is lens makers formula third we discussed is the lens formula So that's it for today. Next class, we will see some problems based on them. Wait a minute, don't leave. Thank you, sir. Don't leave. Wait, wait. Yeah, now you can. Thank you, sir.